Hi everyone and welcome along to today's video. So I've been asked about the Aladdin auto vent radiator valves and how to fit them and what sizes they particularly come in and what rads they don't fit and I'll show you the ones they won't fit in a minute. <laughs> um, but they do come in various sizes, obviously the most popular is 15mm that screw straight in the end of your radiator, so nice and easy. But they also do uh, 6mm ones. Uh, and they do an eighth of an inch one uh, with a quarter of inch bush to screw in. So there's a couple of ranges for smaller sizes. Uh, if you've got a really odd size rad, that may help you out. Now, one type of rad, they definitely won't fit into if you've got one like this. Yep, if you've got one of these, you're out of luck, I'm afraid. The other bleed valve is, is around there, but um, you can't get them to screw straight into a bleed valve. <laughs> okay, so also, if you've got a, a little bleed valve on the end of the rad, and it hasn't got a half inch bush or 15 mil bush in there, uh, and like a normal plug, I'll show you in a second, then also you're out of luck, I'm afraid. There's our bush on the end of the radiator there. That's a bit that has to come out and be replaced. This is the type you've got to have. Okay, this is, this is literally a half inch thread in there. You take the bush out and screw the thing in. If you want to know how to fit one, we'll switch that now. I did it a couple of years back, but it's the same procedure as it is right now. So go and over to that video now. I look a bit younger in this one, by the way. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, today I'm gonna to show you how to fit an automatic air valve um, in a radiator. If you've got a rad it keeps on getting air in it, it can drive you bonkers. Um, you forget to bleed it. I, mean, I know we've all got our little keys to bleed them with, but after a while you forget. And before you know it, the rad's going half cold, it's full of air, and uh, it's a flipping nuisance. Here's our radiator. Now one thing I must stress, you can only fit one of these type of valves if you've got a half inch thread, a half inch threaded nut. Now that's the cap end. Um, on the other end of the radiator, if you come around here at the camera, you'll see we've got the usual bleed valve. Now it really is up to you, you can take this one out and just put the automatic one in, or you can take the cap out and still leave that one in, uh, and then if any time you did want to, if, if the cap stopped working, at least you could still vent it. So I tend to take the cap out and, and add to, because I don't mind, but if you want to take the valve off, take it off. Um, but it's a simple job, and you only need one spanner. Okay, this is a real dog job. First, we're going to turn the water off to the radiator on each end. Okay, uh, mine's got a lot of one of these thermostatic valves down here, which I'm going to turn off. Okay, to zero. And on the other end, um, you may have a lock shield. If you've got a lock shield, pull the cap off and just turn it off with pliers. But I haven't on this one, I've got an ordinary turn valve. Okay, so I can just shut him down nice and easy like that. Okay, once that's off, we make sure then that there's, there's very little water there. We get our air key. And put it in our normal air yeah, vent there and I've got a little container underneath to catch any water okay and it will run you'll get a tiny bit just get a bit of rag or a bit of cloth okay and that's it that's all there is now we'll go around to this side because I'm going to I'm going to fit mine on this end and keep that valve there as well anyway just in case although they have got a good reputation these Aladdin ones um, that they don't normally leak so I'm going to do this end now that little bit's run out, I'm going to put this pot over this end because it will run down this end as it comes out. Okay, there's a little bit there, see it? And we can't help that, I'm afraid that's one of those things. We'll take a valve out and we just lash her in. We'll take her out of the bag. We'll put about a bit of water, but it's already got a washer on it already. Okay, so we can get it straight in. Okay, let's thread her in, it's very simple, look at that, no problem. So as long as you've got something on the floor to catch the excess water that comes out and it's still got a little square on it there so you can get your spanner nice and easily on it especially if you've got a little one like this uh, these ones are very handy for getting in tight places um, but you can use a bigger open-ended spanner if you prefer but I just I just like to use one of these I've always used one of these and it always does the job okay so you just tighten them in like so okay you feel it go tight that's it and that's it now because all we're going to do now is turn this one off we opened it does not matter if you change that one don't worry about it anyway that's the one you've always and you put it in there because you don't want two valves sticking out that's fine don't worry about it because um, it won't it won't make a difference it's designed to replace that anyway just I like to have it on the other I don't mind what we're going to do then is turn it back on and you can hear it bleed did you hear it go 
Uh, you heard it, self bleed there. I'll turn this one on as well. Okay, clear up your little bit of water. And that's it. Um, this little device now will um, we'll keep this bled all the time. We won't have to keep bleeding it anymore. Um, and you can forget about it. Hi everyone, uh, Al with another tip, plumbing tip for you. Um, if you've got a towel rail, like a lot of houses have up, we've got, um, you have to find an airlock because they're at the high position. They're one of the highest position things, usually upstairs in your bathroom, and like this one here, it's high up, and they tend to collect the air in the system. Um, it's just the way it is. I mean, you can't stop air, it will build up wherever it fancies, but a lot of times it will be in one of these. So I'm gonna fit one of these air vents it's a Aladdin bleed valve. They're very, very good. Um, they get the air out straight away. And once you've fitted it, the beauty is you haven't got to go back there anymore and bleed it no more. This will take care of it for you. And it's a case of if you don't bleed these things, um, like at the moment, I've got hot up to here, and then these three rungs are cold because it's, this is full of air at the moment. Um, so it's a typical thing. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to fit this. And it will save you money in the long term because uh, if you're heating that thing up and you're only getting these runs on half, it's not getting hot, it's your waste of money. I mean, you're wasting your gas, or right? if you've got an element in there eating it as well, the element's going away and you're wasting the top half of it anyway, and, and the element's running anyway at 250 watts or whatever you've got in there. So, you know, it's a case of saving your money by doing this little trick that costs you six quid and is easy to do. I'm going to show you how to do it now. Okay, so, first of all, what we've got to do is turn the valves off to the radiator. Uh, now on my particular one, I've got two turn valves like this. Okay, a lot of them do have. Now if you've got a lock shield one on the other end, you will have to pull this off and just turn it down for, for a pair of pliers, okay? But I've got two ordinary valves on mine, so I haven't got to bother with that. But you will find on a lot of them, you may have a lock shield on one end with a screw. You've got to undo the screw and just pull it off and then get that and just turn it off with the pliers until it stops, okay? But as I say, I've got two new valves, so I'm not going to worry. Now I'm going to get up on my bath here and get up here to where this... I've got my air valve here, okay, I don't know if you can see there. It's full of air anyway, so even when I undo this, and when I've got a little basin underneath, I won't need to because it's, it's full of air. So I'm going to whip him out. This is the ordinary bleed valve, which you normally do. I mean, it's one salt to bleed up here, getting up on the bath to do it. It's a, bit of a nuisance anyway, um, so it's saved that. So taking it out, and you know water's coming out because it's full of air. Okay, uh, now I'm going to put the new one in, so let's jump out a second, and get our little, little bleeder here. I'm going to say, that, that's what they look like. A nice little toy, uh, and they're very, very good. So we're just going to screw them in the top of there. That's it. Oh, yeah. Mind the threads on them, mind you don't cross thread them. Very easy. So do it, you know, steady. Steady as an end again. Got a rubber washer around this already, so you've got to put no seal on it, no PTFE, nothing. Okay, it's got a rubber washer on there already, so that's all you need, and just nip it in. Okay, now when I turn this on, you should be able to hear the hair, the air coming out of this, where it'll automatically vent it. So if you put the camera up to there, you should be able to hear the air coming out. So there you go, we'll let it go, let the air come out, and uh, we'll turn it back on in a second, and, and that should be it. So there you go, if you want to save yourself a lot of grief and hassle, with an auto valve and save money in the long term, fit one of these and um, you haven't got to worry no more, the job's done. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Derek from 33 for all my videos. Thanks again.